the coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Hello and welcome. I'm George Cope, your host for the next 30 minutes as we spend some time praising the Lord. You have just joined America's largest prayer and praise gathering as we take the time to just lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you're visiting here as uh, in Orlando as so many come, a million a week come to celebrate with us, live here and enjoy our wonderful weather and all of our amusement parks. But I'm going to tell you something. There's something more attractive to Orlando than just the theme parks in this city. It is the presence of Jesus. It's the power of the gospel that is alive and well in this city. And you are going to be a part of what we are going to share with what God is doing in these next few minutes together. So I want you to sit back and relax. Are you a sports enthusiast? Do you like baseball? Uh, well, we have a guest today that is going to share a life story that's going to impact you. Because when you know somebody's story, then you know how God simply chooses and uses and gets glory from people who are not just powerfully known because of their success as an athlete, but because they are more known for the power of God now resident and living in their lives. You're going to meet in just a few moments Daryl Strawberry. Yeah, the famous Mets Yankee home run hitter, baseball slugger. And you know what? He's a good guy. He loves Jesus. He lives in Orlando. He has a ministry that he wants to tell you about. But most importantly, he wants to lift up Jesus. Are you broken? Do you need some encouragement today? If you want to hear what God can do with anybody, well, stay tuned for the next 27 minutes and you'll hear Daryl's story and God will touch. And I'm sure you'll walk away changed in your heart and in your life. We don't come here to be religious, please. If you're picking up religion in this, forget it. God isn't about religion. Our God is about a relationship that comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to enjoy the ministry of music, and then when we come back from this song, you're going to meet Daryl Strawberry, a friend of mine, a friend of God's, a friend of Orlando, and a man that is doing some extraordinary work to bring the name of Jesus higher than it has ever been. So please, let this song, Bomb and Gilead, minister to you, and then you'll meet Daryl Strawberry.
Lift up your eyes on high. Behold the Lamb, perfect sacrifice. He paid it all. Yes, it is. He paid it all for you. Lift up your eyes on high and behold the Lamb, the perfect sacrifice. He paid it all. Yes, He did. He paid it all for you. That a wonderful truth, the bomb of Gilead, the Holy One is here. He's in your hotel room, he's in your hospital room, he's in your bedroom or your living room. Wherever we go, he's made a promise. He's going to be there, and we're grateful for that today. I'm so delighted to introduce to you a friend of mine. I met Daryl Strawberry just a, a few weeks ago here in the city of Orlando to find out that he lives here in Central Florida now and is involved in ministry. And I just want you to join me and welcome Daryl Strawberry. I am so delighted you're here today, sincerely. Well, well thanks for having me, George. I, I know that uh, your past, when we just say the name, I mean, Strawberry, <laughs> when we hear Strawberry, uh, obviously the name pops up. I'm sure you've been in, more, in front of more TV cameras than you can count. <laughs> if you had a dollar, you would be another wealthy guy. <laughs> but, the, but the reality is that God has, uh, he blessed you and he has changed your life. But, you know, uh, the, the, as I've always wanted to remember that what I love about the scriptures is the fact that when I look into those pages, I don't see perfect people. I see imperfect people that came to a perfect God and God did some miraculous things with them. And the journey of the scriptures are so important. So really what I'd like to do over the next uh, 17, 18 minutes, I, I want to I wanna hear the journey. I, I want these folk to walk away from our time and say, I know Daryl Strawberry, not the baseball player or not, you know, the, the man that had his struggles, but I want to know the man, Daryl Strawberry. You grew up in uh, Compton, Southwest Compton? Uh, South Central. Los South Central, yeah. Los Angeles. South okay. Central, Los Angeles. Tell me about your childhood. What did that look like? Well, my childhood was very difficult. Uh, my father was a raging alcoholic. Um, he came home um, night after night uh, just with craziness. And, you know, he kind of beat me and beat my brother Ronnie. So we went through some very difficult times. Uh, as kids, and, and always, always wondered inside, you know, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't he like me? Why, why does any little infraction you do, you get a beating behind it? And you realize that when, um, I didn't realize that at the time, but, you know, for him uh, becoming an alcoholic and who he was, then you realize, you know, where his problem 
really lied inside of him. You know, it wasn't me. It was it was the dysfunction of what was going on inside of him, and and basically he uh, taking it out on us. And it was a, a very difficult time growing up as a young kid. I was very disturbed early at the age of 13 um, years old when he came home and pulled out a shotgun and threatened wow. to kill all of us. And we went into action. And what most people don't know, George, you know, they just look at me as a baseball player and and, and millions of dollars, they don't they don't understand that I was already scarred inside before yeah. I put a uniform on because, yeah. you know, we came this close to killing my father wow. that night and my mother ran us all out of the house and told us don't come back in because me and my brothers were done, you know, uh, with the fact that he would come on. He was very abusive every night right. and, and after drinking. And so at that point, we realized there that uh, something had to change and my mom realized that something had to change so she decided from there she divorced my father and when she divorced him I was probably about 13 14 years old and and I was angry you know and I had a lot of a lot of a lot of hurt inside and I became very defiant early you know I got kicked out of like four junior high schools and got into all kind of fights troubles tried a little gang tried a little this and uh, started early with uh, smoking marijuana uh, and drinking early, so it, it was a it was a lot of um, dissatisfaction inside of me to try to fulfill myself to make me feel better. Okay, so you come from brokenness. How did you get to baseball? Then was baseball a deterrent from you from all of these kinds of things? No, I got to baseball because um, I think a lot of different local coaches started to see that I didn't have a father at home, and they started to pour into my life, and they thought um, coming out to play baseball would you know, break the frustration of who I was. Uh, so, and, and which it really did, you know, because I got involved and I started loving the game of baseball, but I always, you know, try to explain to people that my pain led me to my greatness. Wow. It was the pain that I was in, inside, led me to my greatness as being becoming a baseball player because I remember my father said I wouldn't mount to nothing, I wouldn't be anything. So I really channeled myself and focused myself into uh, playing baseball and learning from the coaches, and, and the coaches took time with me. You know, they, they walked me down roads uh, like a father figure, and they believed in me right. and, and, and made me believe in myself. Yeah. I, I'm interested. W when was the first time, this may be, I never set you up for this, but when was the first time you thought to yourself, you know, I can really do this. Th th I, I'm good at this. W was, right. it a, was there a moment, a defining moment, that you just knew baseball was, man, this is, this is who I am? What? I, I think, George, more than anything, I never, really never came to a defining moment about that. Uh, I came to a place where I just loved it. Okay. And I, I, and I wasn't afraid to, what I wasn't afraid of, I wasn't afraid to fail. Yeah. I think failure is a part of succeeding. And I learned that in sports. And when you can balance that out, you know, it brings you to a greater understanding, a greater appreciation why you plan. Okay. You know, I, and, and baseball is very difficult, it's very challenging. Um, because it's a one-on-one -on -one thing, a you against the pitcher, and you know, and I, I, I love that challenge, you know. So I learned from there to compete with inside myself, not compete against them, but with inside myself. Well, how good do you really want to be? Mm -hmm. And you have to ask yourself. And when I started asking myself that, um, right, right after I got into high school, because my first year in high school, I played on the varsity baseball team, and I kind of jogged off the field, and my coach like thumped me and said, don't ever walk off the field like that. I took the uniform off, threw it in his face and quit. Wow. So I, was, I, I still had some things there, yeah. you know. Sure. And then I come back my junior year and, and senior year and, and do well and play and get drafted and, and go on to have a, a, a Major League Baseball yeah. career. So you, you're the number one draft pick in 1980, and you, you've played in, what, eight consecutive All-Star games. You, you hit uh, 300 and 335 home 35 runs. Home runs. Yeah. Uh, you had a career. Did then people look at your life and let's you know just in honesty because you played and then you were suspended and then you came back. Uh, was that what went on as a child in that brokenness? Was that what was emerging out of you in those years of struggle? Did that was that a part of it? Oh no question. No no question. It was a part of it because I think it's genetic. You know when. I think every young man looks to have a father figure in his life, in the home, and I think it's very important to have that, and I didn't have that. So what does that mean? That means I go out and I believe everything I want to do without no one teaching me. I do it on my own, and I had to learn it on my own. And that's what happened in that lifestyle of professional sports. You know, it was the 
nightlife, it was the alcohol, it was the drugs, it was the women. Uh, it was the whole life that he just handed it to me and says, here, you know, uh, that comes from the dysfunction that's inside of a person. I don't care how much money you give a person and how success, successful a person get, if he doesn't like himself inside, right. he's going to damage himself. You know, and, and that's what it was for me. It, um, they, they built me up as, you know, this, this great athlete, which, you know, I turned out to be. I could play baseball, and there's so many great athletes. Had I, I always said, had I known, like Mickey Mantle said, had I known how good I was, I would have took better care of myself. But we just don't know. You don't know at that time, and, you know, because you hadn't really had a father figure in your life, so it makes it even more difficult. So you go out there and you challenge yourself with all these other things and believe this is part of it, and that's what I did. Yeah. So fame and fortune and all of that kind of stuff, let's turn to what really, because there was a day when your life changed. Go to that day. Tell us what happened. How did you meet Jesus, and what did Jesus do to begin the process of healing and restoration inside of you? Well, I, I believe it was always a call. My mother, my mother was telling me that when she was dying, you know, she said, God has called you. Um, he, she told me, she said, God's going to get it out of you. I was at the height of my career, making millions of dollars. She said, God spoke to me and said, he's going to get it out of you. Wow. So I ended up getting saved in 1991, radically saved at um, a more Cirillo conference. Um, went there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and all I did was cry. I had just signed a $20 million contract to play in L.A., and I was a free agent, and I was broken. And I was empty. I had already played eight years in the big leagues, had millions of dollars, homes, car, and stuff. And I was wondering why I was so empty inside. And I, I went to this conference uh, with my first wife, Uncle uh, Bill. I'll never forget him, Bill Payne. And he took me to the conference, and all I did was cry. And, and, and Morris said, on Sunday, I'm going to lay hands on people, and people will get delivered and set free. And as I went down there Sunday, um, at, the power of God came over me. He laid hands on me, and I just hit the floor. My belly started flowing like a river. I started immediately speaking in tongues. And he says, pick him up. And he says, God has called you. God's got a great call on your life. And he says, no matter he says, you're going to go through it. All hell's going to break loose in your life. But God has called you. And that was uh, the beginning of uh, knowing the introduction to who God was. And... After that moment there, you know, I went through a period where I understood God had called me, but what I missed was the discipleship. Yeah. You know, so many, George, missed the discipleship Absolutely. of God's word, of not knowing the word of God. And when you don't get the discipleship, you go back to the familiar. Yeah. And that's what exactly happened to me. I didn't get the discipleship part and went straight back to the familiar of what I knew and know how to live and all hell broke loose. So how did you get the discipleship? Where was the, well, when did it come to you that, because now you're an ordained minister of the gospel. Yes. You're preaching. I heard you preach recently. <laughs> and the man has got an anointing folk on his life. The guy can preach. He, he, he's not just a, don't, he's not going to be known for baseball forever. <laughs> He's going to be known as a preacher. How, yeah. where, where did that discipleship come? Well, it's, it's glad you asked that, you know, because what happened was is I met this wonderful woman. That's my wife today, Tracy. Mm. And she had got saved, and I was out in the world. So she was uh, a big part of after all the trials and tribulations, uh, the jail, the prison sentence, you know, T17169, I'll never forget. God was doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. Wow. Sometimes people don't understand that in their life, that God has to do something for you to protect you because so, God's got a plan to get you where he needs to get you to. And Tracy came into my life, and, and she was serving the Lord. And, and the Lord used her, her life to lead me back mm -hmm. to the cross. And, you know, I, I saw her, and I saw her following God, and, and I knew, and I started teaching her the Bible, but I wasn't there but I knew the Bible but I was teaching her and she and we 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 came together and and then we started a relationship and then we broke it off and, and then she finally broke it off with me which which I knew I loved her because she had led me back to God mm -hmm. and, and I know I needed to go get my heart right with God and I left the relationship with her and went went away for six months in, in a consecration with God and I stopped everything George I stopped women I stopped drugs I stopped Wow. You know, I stopped it all. I just went to church two to three, four times a week, and I, I sat in church, and I started getting discipled, wow. you know, and I started following the will of God. I wanted to learn the will of God, you know, 
um, you could say Tracy was the biggest influence on me because I loved her, but she wasn't going to be with me if I wasn't right. right. And I knew that God had sent her in my life to, uh, to make a change. And when we finally decided to get back together, I was right in my heart. I went and got discipled, um, got back in church and stayed with God and, and studied and came from out of the world and no longer wanted any parts of that. And we started on our journey together and then God sent me back after six months and he says, go back and marry her now. And I went back and married her, see, because most people want to like, yeah. <laughs> most people want to be together and you want to shack up. God is not, God is not going to bless no mess. That's right. He'll clean it up for you. He'll help you clean it up, but he wants you to do it right. So, Absolutely. And that's what happened with me and Tracy. We started doing it right. And then we started on our journey together with God. We started growing together. But what most people don't understand, we didn't have nothing when we started. I was $3 million in debt. Mm. I didn't have a driver's license. So wow. we started serving. You know, we yeah. started serving others. Got, you know, I hear Joyce Meyer talk about it all the time, about, you know, get out of yourself and go help somebody else. Right. And God will take care of you. And that's what me and Tracy started doing. We started serving, started going to youth detention centers. We started serving, helping people in the church. And, you know, slowly but surely, God just started making his way, you know, cause to see that we were faithful um, at what we were doing. And we wasn't doing it for attention. We wasn't doing it right. for, you know, publicity. Mm -hmm. We were doing it because we love him. You know, we fell in love with him. We started understanding the word of God and we started uh, living by the principles. Uh, that really made a, a big difference in our life. So your past and baseball and all of that has sort of given you a platform, but it sort of now focused you what, what your future is and what you really your heart is to do. Uh, tell tell our, our viewers what it is. What is it now that you spend your life doing? What are you and Tracy are doing that, and the passion that you have to help people? Well, you know, we come, we both come from substance abuse and, you know, she's got a uh, long time clean and I do too and and we have two treatment centers uh, we have one here in St. Cloud and one in Deland uh, uh, we have one that just opened there a facility there for substance abuse to help people um, and the place is full all the time with the generation and with the drug addictions and alcohol problems we see in America today uh, young people are dying uh, so our passion is to help them not only help them understand uh, about substance abuse but to help them understand the brokenness you know, the brokenness of their life because lawlessness brings about brokenness, That's right? You know, and we need to, we need to bring that back to people and show them, you know, that if we live according to God's will and, and his principles, you know, our lives can be different. And I think we need to teach that generation that's missing that God is real. Um, I, I, I think, uh, it's too much, it's too much out there now for them in social media and t television that's saying you can have all this and you can have that. You don't need God. Well, the devil is alive, George. We, right. we need to get back to the Bible and what the Bible talks about, how we need to get people restored. We believe in that through our ministry and what God has been able to bless us with and multiply me and Tracy with, um, you know, the books we've written and, and just, you know, we have love for people because God loved us. You know, and I, and I think as believers, we all, and leaders, you know, when God gives us a platform, we need to always remember where God brought us from. Mm -hmm. So we can always go back and get somebody else that says, your condition is just another condition. It doesn't face God. He can fix this condition. That's right. If you just trust and believe right. and, and walk in faith, you know, not how we feel. Too many of us walk about how we feel. Right. It's the faith God talks about that we have to walk in. So if, uh, if our viewers want to uh, reach out to you, what's your web address that they could, uh, they could go to and they could learn more about your ministry? Yes, yeah, strawberryministries.org. Strawberryministries.org. Okay, so folk, uh, it'll be on your screen right there. Just go to strawberryministries.org and uh, check them out. Uh, follow what they are doing, buy their books and, and get engaged in their ministry because I know that Daryl is absolutely committed to a local church here in Orlando, but you travel on weekends, you and Tracy go and speak and you have a lot of involvement with couples and and organizations and conventions and all kinds of ministries that are going on in the midst of that. Yes, we have, we, we do, we do a lot, you know, we do, um, the marriage ministry, uh, because you know our marriage, you know our relationship was broken. Yeah. And we have a book called "The Imperfect Marriage: Help for Those Who Think Is Over." Yeah. And me and Tracy made it through some crazy storm. I imagine you, know, you did. But it was the grace. Yeah. You know, it's the grace of God that uh, brought us through because she was there with God and I wasn't there with God. And you know, it was God grace that you know kept her from not leaving. And it was God grace that kept me 
from not falling off the cliff and being able to bring me back into the relationship and, and, and making, it, making it hold. And, you know, we do, um, Tracy do events, you know, she did a curriculum called yeah. Clean, Sobered, and Saved. Clean, Sobered, and Saved. You know, they, yeah. people get the clean and sober part, but they miss the saved, saved part. She wrote a curriculum. God gave her, gives her so much ability to write. She wrote, she has written a curriculum, Clean, Sobered, and Saved, that's biblical, yeah. 12 steps of recovery. You know, to show people what's wrong with them, you know, and so they can come to the wholeness and get set free and get delivered, you know, because, you know, it's the, it's the wages of sin that's death, you know, it's the sinful way, you know, it's one man brought sin in, Adam, one man brought grace in, that's Jesus. So we need to understand that grace is, is sufficient for all, and hopefully people can realize that when we go out. And, yeah, I do a lot of traveling. I, I, I preach at a lot of um, churches across America and, and just to bring the hope of who God is. Okay, we, 30 seconds. All right, we're almost done. 30 seconds. Look into that camera right in front of you and talk about to you what, when people think of you, they think, uh, here's a success. Tell them what you think success really means. Okay, I think when most people think success, when you have millions of dollars, you live behind the community gates, you have everything. And I used to think that too, but I realized that I had nothing. It wasn't until I came to the cross and yield myself and said yes to Jesus. And once you come to that place of saying yes to Jesus and allowing yourself to be discipled and so you can understand the biblical principles and live by the pr biblical principles, God will do great things to you. God is not looking for your status. God is looking for your faith. Bless you and just trust God and believe him. Amen. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, sir. What a privilege. I, you know, I, again, it is exciting to me that in this culture in which we live, that God is, again, raising up people that have a story, yes, but more than that, they have a testimony, the testimony of God's amazing grace. If you're sitting in a spot, in a moment of disbelief that God could love you or care for you, I'm here to tell you, Daryl has just told you what success is. It's bowing your knee and saying, Jesus Christ, come to me. So we're going to pray together. I'm not going to close my eyes. We don't have to close our eyes. This isn't religion, remember? It's relationship. So here's what we're going to do. All you need to do is just talk to God something like this. Jesus, I'm a broken human being. I need your help. Today, I've heard Daryl's story, and I want what Daryl has. I want Jesus Christ. Jesus, come into my life. Today, from this day forward, I'll follow you and I'll trust you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer... Just simple words. He's heard you. Now, call the number on your screen. TBN is here all the time. They'll love to serve you and minister to you. Thanks again, Daryl, for being with us. Thank you for being here. May God richly bless you. Until next time, don't ever forget, Jesus loves you. He really does. Bye for now. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.